Minute. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. This is Jack Frew, and we're just going to give it a minute to let everybody kind of get on the webinar here. All right, it looks like it's uh, 12 noon Eastern time. So uh, welcome everybody. This is uh, Jack Frew and we've also got Asif and Jennifer. Asif and Jennifer, you wanna say hello? Hey everybody. Hello. So thank you for coming to the webinar today. So the goal of our webinar here is to give you some insider tips as well as maybe just some information about Ignite that you wouldn't know, uh, especially if you're coming from out of town or what have you. So uh, we're gonna go through a couple slides and we've also got a Q&A panel. So if you've got a question, in your GoToWebinar screen, there's an area for asking questions. Go ahead and throw a question there, and we will do our best to answer everything. There will be a recording of this uh, afterwards, and we're going to do our best to get it up as quick as we can because we know the seminar is coming up, or I should say the, the seminar, the, the conference is coming up in a week, right? So uh, we'll do our best to get that done quickly for you. Uh, so let's go over a couple of things here. Um, all right, Ignite, uh, I'm sure you guys all know, but Ignite has sold out 20,000 people and it sold out a little while ago. I, I've actually felt bad. Somebody this morning was asking me about Ignite and I said, I'm sorry, I don't think you can get in. It's, it's sold out, but there's some interesting, uh, interesting stats here that were put together. Uh, here's some session information that you might be interested in. Uh, My Ignite session scheduler, this printed guide, which, I, I, Asif, do you know, are they gonna have a guide this year? They didn't at the last SharePoint conference. This time, I'm pretty sure they are going to because there were some issues last time. Yep. That'd be great. That'd be great. I'd like that. And also Yammer and things like that. So uh, lots of ways to stay in touch during the conference. Um, let's go on to our next slide here. Asif, do you want to comment on any of this stuff here? Uh, no, let's, uh, let's just see. The main thing over here to, for everybody to remember is uh, there is a experience that you get online and you get the experience offline as well, right? So we're catering, of course, to begin with, with, with what's going to be offline, uh, meaning in person. Uh, but this thing is talking about how you can also follow along the conference online as well. Sure. Uh, yeah, we can go forward. That's fine. Okay. So uh, the first thing you're probably going to know if you're coming into town is – how are you going to get back and forth, right? There's like, what is there, like 20 different hotels that are going to, people are going to be staying at. Most of them are not within walking distance. So here is the shuttle schedule. And uh, again, the slide deck will be available afterwards. So you can, you can pull this from there, but there's going to be shuttles every day. It looks like they start pretty early in the morning and they go till pretty late. Now, a notable one is Thursday. Uh, it says it goes to 1030. I'm, I'm assuming that means PM, right? Um, yeah. Oh, it says right <laughs> I'm there. assuming, yeah. Yeah, because that's when the big event is, and we'll talk about that a little yeah, bit. You so know what? Bottom line is you'll have shuttle service back and forth, so don't uh, don't take a cab if you don't have to. That that cost you more money. Hey Jack, I'm pretty sure this is 10:30 a.m. Actually, so if oh, you is it? Back, you think they stop yeah. at that point? And, you know, this is like, yeah, it does stop. Uh, let me actually make a point over here as well. Uh, Jack and I both are from Chicago land, so here's some fact that I think everybody should know about. McCormick Place is a beautiful conference location. It's very, very big. You can fit planes in there, jumbo jets. But having said that, there's nothing to do by McCormick Place. If you're staying in the Hyatt that's by McCormick Place, that's great. You're close to the actual action, but you're close to every, you're far from every, everywhere else. So these shuttles are going to be your friend. You want to get out. You want to get back to your hotel and do everything there, uh, aside from the actual conference. All the Chicago that you want to see, it's going to be away from the conference center. Don't you agree, Jack? I, I do agree, and I actually stayed uh, at the Hyatt there, and you're right, there's nothing to do. Like, it's not even like you can be adventurous and walk four or five blocks or something. I mean, you're you're probably, you know, it, it's it's kind of stinks because it's just beyond what would be comfortable to walk to just to get to, like, downtown, right? But, yeah, yeah. so those shuttles are definitely your, what, definitely your friend. What about for um, folks that aren't, like, so I'm not from Chicago. This is actually, I think I, I, I went there once for a really short weekend, but haven't been there at all and one thing I am super nervous about is just a uh, shuttle schedule and how quickly do we need to get on the buses to make sure that I'm I just have visions of traffic being absolutely horrible so do you guys have any since you guys are both from the area any thoughts or things that we should be you know considering when we're planning on what we're trying to do I would say for sure the first day definitely go early right give yourself time and then after that you can kind of see how things go an interesting thing about chicago traffic is it's worse on the highways getting into chicago than it is in downtown chicago 
right? Now there's going to be traffic. It's not like the bus is going to get all green lights and you're going to be back and forth in a minute, but you'll find that it's not nearly as bad. Like it may take, if, if you drive in from the suburbs, it might take you two hours to make a 30 mile drive, right? From Chicago, you know, from your hotel to the conference center, maybe it's going to be 10 minutes, maybe it's going to be 15. You know, it's, it's not going to be that, that crazy. So I think you'll be okay. I have some inside news on that. Uh, you guys might already know this, but if not, here's something for everybody. That the shuttles are going to take a specific route, which is going to be private. For the most part, it's going to be private from any other public traffic. So there is a secret route which the mayor wow. of Chicago actually has allowed the conference that organizers is, to use. That is excellent news, and it kind of makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> wow, I had no idea. That's awesome. And we'll we'll show a map later. But there's a couple other things yeah. that you might think that you can take that you probably can't. So we'll talk about some of the train routes and stuff too. Um, yeah, let's if go you've seen the movie. Fine. If you've seen the movie The Blues Brothers, you might remember that there was a chase scene where they ended up, you know, I think they drove right here. The building that you're looking at right there, that's Lakeside Center of McCormick Place. Now, back when the movie was filmed, that was McCormick Place. That was it, right? McCormick Place doesn't really look like that anymore. I mean, that building is still there, and that's actually where the keynote and where the after party is going to be on Thursday. They're going to be in that building. We call that Lakeside Building because right on the other side of it is Lake Michigan, right? Today... McCormick's kind of got more of an updated look, and most of the conference center, I'd say, you know, a bulk of the square footage is in kind of this newer style building that's across the street from it, right? If we look at this on a map, it looks a little bit like this. If you look over here, you can see that the keynote's going to be in this building. There used to be a road right here. There isn't anymore, but that's where the Blues Brother thing was filmed. Here's obviously your lake, okay? This whole thing over here is called the North Building. This is called the South Building, and down over here is something called the West Building, right? This whole thing is huge. You're probably talking with foot traffic and everything else, maybe 15 or 20 minutes to walk from over here to over here, okay? Wow. So, Put that into some perspective right now if the place is empty you probably could do it 10 but i with 20,000 people i think it's going to be tough and just to put a note on this map here's obviously downtown in the back here's uh, what used to be called Se uh, sears tower they call it willis tower now there is an elevated train you've heard of the l the l is like right uh, i think it must be like right here okay so it looks like you could take the l and come over here, I would I would stick with the shuttle buses is what I would do. The other thing you're going to see is on the map, there is a railroad line that goes right underneath here, okay? And the thing to know about Chicago, we have eight different railroad lines that don't connect, okay? So if you're near a railroad station, don't think, oh, I'll just hop on this and take it over to McCormick Place uh, because it's there's a good chance it doesn't go there. So just to share that. All right, well, let's go to our next slide. Here is a close-up of McCormick Place. We pulled this right off of the McCormick Place website. And uh, Asif, I don't know if you have anything to talk about specifically here. The big one, again, Lakeside Center. This is, uh, now, it's oriented differently than it was on the map, but, you know, Lake Michigan picture it is, is over this way, right? This is where the keynote is going to be. It's also where the party is going to be, right? Now, my advice for the keynote would be to get there early. I've been to these Microsoft events, and you think, oh, keynote, I'll just show up whenever. There, there'll be people lining up to go into this keynote an hour before it starts, and there'll be uh, a line outside. Definitely, definitely. And, <laughs> and, it's, and I've been to events from Microsoft where I couldn't get into the keynote, and you they know, were scrambling to get like a, 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 like a, a spoil over, a spillover room kind of thing, right? right? So, uh, so definitely nice. The other thing, if you're on, I mean, if you care enough that you're on this conference call, like you're like to me, you're one of the elite people. So congratulations for being here. Why not get there early and get up close where you can actually see the people in real life instead of being, you know, a thousand feet back looking at a TV screen overhead to see what the guy on stage is doing. So, like, I'm a huge fan of getting there early for the, for the keynote. I don't think you can get there too early at all. Um, the other thing that is, actually, you know what's not on this is there is also a, uh, that East building. And I don't know if, if, is there any, I don't know if there's any, any, if we're doing anything in the East building or not, but there's another bridge that comes across and connects the East building with this. And then there's also a bridge here. So you can go from one building to another. You never have to go outside. Okay, so one thing to, I guess I would, here's some advice. If you're coming from another area, you're not sure about Chicago weather, once you get on that bus, you should be okay. So I don't think I would recommend bringing a coat, for example, because you're going to be hauling that coat around with you all day long. I wouldn't do that. I'd leave the coat at your hotel. Um, all right. Anybody have anything to add to that? 
<laughs> somebody I know I'm gonna also throw out some things that people are saying out there so Hermine uh, one of our audience members says wear comfortable shoes I so much agree there's gonna be a lot of walking a lot of walking I, I think I, I have to tell you even if you wear a business outfit every single day of your life there is no shame in wearing comfortable gym shoes at a conference like this well, and the thing with the, the trick with shoes is especially for the ladies bring two pairs and rotate them every other day and, so and now, let your this feet might be get tired too much. switch them. <laughs> I've also heard people saying bring band-aids. If you don't wear your gym shoes all the time, sometimes the back can kind of rub up and down on your on your heel, and you can get a blister. So even having a couple of band-aids with you to put on the back of your feet is, uh, you know, is, can be handy, right? So, um, so a great question from the audience there. So thank you so much for that. Um, Charles and I asked, have heard. Oh, I'm sorry. I no, had heard ahead. that they um, they work to put like sessions together. So um, I had heard when I was talking to one of the uh, conference coordinators that they tried to put um, sessions in the same tracks in different buildings um, together. So we should be pretty close when we're looking at. They have a 30 minute break between the sessions, but hopefully things will be close enough that like sessions will be together, so it won't feel totally overwhelming. Sure. Let's see. There was a question out here. I think um, somebody asked, how is parking if you decide to drive from your hotel? So Charles, parking is extraordinarily expensive. I want to say it's going to be anywhere from 20 to $35. There are several places that we can park. So let's just kind of talk about that for a second. And for that, let me go back to this slide right here. Okay. Um, Parking in McCormick Place. There's parking underneath this building here. I think they call that the A parking lot. There is a very small amount of parking probably in there. There's also a very small amount of parking like right over here. Zach, your pointer is not to... working. I don't think. Oh, jeez. Uh... You know what? <laughs> Hang on. Let me try this again. I'm drawing on the wrong screen. Okay. Oh, there you go. Parking underneath the, the lakeside building. I think that's parking lot A, if I'm not mistaken. There's parking over here that's in a parking garage like right about there okay and that one you actually get to from I-55 you get off and you kinda go under and you come around and you go back in then there's a pretty huge parking lot over here this is where most people end up parking like when they do the auto show and stuff like that I, I think they're all expensive and I think you you end up for example when we were here we walked back to the building it took us 15 minutes to get from our car to this edge of the building and then we had to go like all the way under just to get inside. Like, so bottom line is I wouldn't recommend parking if you're coming in from a hotel. Just take the shuttle. I think that's the best bet. Um, any other questions anybody sees in the uh, in the in the chat before we move on? No, nope, not yet. Let's do it. Let's... All right, let's move forward. But that was I think that was a great question about parking for for those who are who are going to be driving in. Um, all right, what did we do here? We hit the wrong button. Let's just continue on with that. There we go. And we talked about uh, name badge pickup. So this is something Asif dug up. And Asif, do you want to talk about this? Because I think this is a pretty huge thing here. Yeah, you know, you land at O'Hare if you're from out of town, and you can actually get your badge directly there, Terminal 1 and Terminal 3, which I think is super cool. And then, of course, many other hotels that are listed here too. But you don't have to wait until the convention center to get your badge. And your badge is the main ticket for uh, not just the sessions and not just the vendor thing, but also the, uh, the other I events that are happening around town as well. Yeah, and as you see on here, a lot of these badge pickups are only on the weekend, right? Now, I've always recommended people go and get their badge early, right? It acclimates you to the conference center a little bit. You don't have to wait in line, all that kind of stuff. I think this is great what Microsoft is doing this year with having multiple locations. Um, I, I, I don't know. Personally, I'd still probably make a trek to McCormick Place just to see it a day early, but, uh, but this is, I think, a, a great welcome thing just to get that out of the way. So uh, awesome that you found that, Asif. All right. Uh, let's talk about the uh, expo floor. Asif, you have a lot to say about this, so I'm going to let you take the uh, take the microphone here. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> you see, Ignite Conference is not SPC. <laughs> we all know that, right? And because it's not SPC, we have to share our space with everybody else, like the Dynamics folks and Cloud Platform and Windows and Skype for Business, or as known as Link. So the yellow part that you're looking at, and yeah, you're probably gonna I'm gonna highlight that, right? Yeah. All that stuff is where the SharePoint folks belong. Uh, of course, if you want to venture, venture out and look at other stuff as well, that's perfectly fine. And we won't uh, blame you for that. <laughs> but yellow is where all the SharePoint stuff is happening, which is one big part of the area, but it's not all of it. Yeah. You know, on the right, there's something else to point out over here, Jack. I don't know if we talked about this, but you see all these tables on the right? Over here. Yeah. All that stuff, that's the meal hall. That's where, oh. yeah, that's where we go to stay hydrated and to, and to stay fed. We have to go through the vendor uh, hall to get there. 
And by the way, something that we didn't really chat about earlier, Jack and Jennifer, is right there, would you redrew the first entrance, Jack? That's where our booth is as well. So visualize oh, okay. our booth is gonna be right right along the lines of, well, a little bit more to the left area. Anyway, maybe I'll point out on the next slide there. Somewhere over there. Right. So definitely, folks, if you can just, you know, hey, knock on the door before going, I would definitely love to say hi to uh, you. It will be myself. It will be Carrie from our team. It will be Michael from our team as well. At the also, just to put a plug in, if you've never actually seen Asif Ramani uh, speak, if you're not that familiar with him, Asif has written a bunch of books on SharePoint Designer and doing no code and that kind of stuff. Um, I have seen Asif present before, and you know, if he, if you think he sounds great on this webinar, you should see him in person. He's fantastic. I think he's oh, he's he is a reason to go to an event like this because because he's he's a great presenter and his content is always like it pays for itself. It's just awesome. So we'll plug for Asif there. Well, you know, uh, I I feel the same thing for Jennifer as well. By the way, we do the same kind of <laughs> power user no code stuff. We're doing a session together, in fact, which we'll talk about a little bit more in the webinar. And uh, if you guys come by to our session, I think we'll have a lot of fun together. Hey, just a quick thing before I forget, the green on the top right in that slide that you're showing, that's our small booth. No, no, yeah. Oh, right here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's our small space in the, uh, in the world of Ignite. There we go, right right, right there. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so if we go back to the other map, where is that in relation to? That was like up over here somewhere? Let me go back and forth. No, it was the next yeah. block over. So it was actually like over underneath the dynamic Come section. Over there, yeah. It we must have gotten to. a discount because it was in the dynamic section and not in the <laughs> office section there. Now, Asif, do yeah. you know, do people get to the meals through the, uh, through the expo floor or is it the other way around? They get to the expo floor through the meals. No, it is the first way that you mentioned. Uh, that's my understanding so far, that you have okay. to go to the expo floor to get to the meal hall. Of course, surprise, surprise, right? Microsoft wants the vendors to get a lot of exposure. No complaints here. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, that's what it is. If you go to the next slide, actually, that's a more of a zoomed-in uh, view, as we were saying before, right? So sure. this is where folks can see that the blue, all the blue over here, and our small green as well, these are all boots. Right, uh, and once once you go there, you you'll have a much better understanding of who's where. Uh, but having said that, all the other rectangles and squares, which are just regular white, that's where the areas uh, for different groups are. So Dynamics is right there. Microsoft SharePoint is on the left over there. Exchange, uh, Office client. So where do we have Dynamics? Was here. Yeah. Um, there's Office Developer, yeah. Office 365, yep. Exchange, SharePoint right here. Are these there. going to be like just open floor areas? Is that what, you, what we yes. think is happening? Yes, the okay. kiosks and open floor areas is my understanding so far of what's going to be. And then around that, of course, is all the vendor boots, which is the blue. So awesome. there's going to be a lot of walking. These are the bigger, especially the bigger boots are going to take a lot of space, as you can see. Yeah. I'd, awesome. I'd say, though, out of like the conference things, uh, years and years and years ago, before I was really even doing much in the industry and I would go to conferences, I had the best experiences going to the different booths, especially the different areas like the Microsoft um, SharePoint areas and stuff like that. You're going to get so much amazing content just going in and hanging out with them. Maybe you don't necessarily have specific questions to ask, but listening to what others are asking and hanging out, I mean, it just becomes such a rich conference experience as if you get to go take advantage of these as well um, and really make it a point to spend some time in these areas. Hey, um, let's go. We've got one more slide for this, and then there's some questions I want to answer that are in the chat room as well. So let's uh, let's take a quick look here. So this is uh, is this the bottom half of the other screen? Is that what we've got? Yeah, this is the other side of that, right? Fit the, um, and didn't want to so. make it so small, so I went ahead and split it up. But you know, the slide deck will be available, folks. Uh, in fact, you know what, what I'm going to do? Try to do is within this webinar, I'll go ahead and send a, a link if everything is completed, and you'll get, be able to get the slide deck right after. So you'll see this in there. Awesome, awesome. Um, before we move on to some of this other stuff, a couple of people are asking about shuttles to the airport. Does anybody know? Are they running any kind of shuttle service from the airport, or are you on your own to get to your hotel? But okay. you know, hey Jack, uh, what do you recommend? I have my recommendation, but what would you recommend for from getting? Well, I think just to let people know, okay, there is something called the L. Now, not all of it is elevated, but the L part comes from the the downtown part where these trains are up above the street. You can take the L. I think it's called the blue line if you're going from O'Hare into downtown. It's called the orange line if you're going from Midway into downtown. Okay, you could take either one of those. I would say, I mean, unless you're paying out of pocket, I'd probably get a cab. Would be my 
would be my thing. A cab or you know a uh, limo or something like that. But but a cab's probably the probably my my preferred way to go. Expensive. What do you think? The only thing if you do. Don't you think so? What was that? I, I'm just thinking that if you take a cab from O'Hare all the way to uh, downtown, it will get a bit expensive. But you're right. I mean, depending on who's paying for it, I guess, right? It, it it is probably a fifty dollar ride, I guess. Maybe it's not quite as much. It's hard to say. Um, and if you're going from O'Hare to downtown, I, I think that probably that line probably goes through, you know, maybe nicer areas than the Orange Line does coming from the south. But uh, you know, it, the the L's, you know, they make frequent stops, right? I mean, they, you know, they stop at every station along the way, that kind of thing. I mean, either one will get you there. Now, the thing to really be aware of is if you decide to take the L back. Right. If you get in a cab and you tell your cab driver you want to go to the airport, the cab driver is going to get you to the airport. If you get into the wrong L train, and and they, by the way, in case you're not familiar with this, everybody knows about the Chicago Loop. It's a loop of track where like the, all of these L trains come together. It's one track, but there might be six different L trains that go on it. If you get on the wrong L train, you're going the wrong place. Right. So that's just something to be aware of there. So uh, now that said, the L might be more predictable time-wise when you're leaving. Okay, if you can look and see how long it takes to get from downtown to the airport, and as long as you can get on one, they're not full, you'll probably get to the airport when you think you will, right? Whereas a taxi, you might get caught in rush hour traffic, and you might be stuck for, you know, an hour drive kind of thing. So um, I don't know if that helps for the folks that asked that. It looks like Amanda and uh, who else asked that? There was one other person that asked. So uh, thanks to both of you, uh, Carrie. Um, so there we go. All right. Um, Asif, do you want to talk about Yammer Second Screen for a minute? Yeah, so I'll tell, talk about what I know, of course, and Jennifer, I'm sure you can uh, talk more about that as well. But, you know, at any sessions that you go to on Ignite uh, website, there's always this view slide deck on the top right. Uh, and that, yeah, right there, that will show you the slide deck, and I believe that will also get you to the Yammer group here as well. I think that's how it works in there. And this Yammer group is very cool because it's dynamic. It's got that session code in this one. It says BRK3193. Uh, and you can have live discussions directly with the presenters, if they are also there, and or the attendees directly before, during, and after the, the, the sessions going on. I think it's really cool to have that second session or second screen experience. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's neat. I think it's, um, I've had a few people give me feedback before that they're like, but the speakers weren't interacting with us during the session. So it's a little tricky. It's something that we can do after. Um, but it gives you a great chance to interact with other people that are there. Um, and so maybe find people who have similar interests and stuff like that. But out of the sessions, I know that they, they do it and they like to have it there. But I, I don't know if I've used it too much at conferences, just being totally honest with it. Because um, it's kind of hard to get in and get that feedback, but afterwards I go and look at it. Sure. Hey, one comment I want to make is, you know, one of the biggest values of going to a conference isn't so much attending these sessions. I mean, I think we know that they're going to be all recorded and available online. One of the biggest things is the personal connections that you make. And I think that when we talk about this, and Jennifer just mentioned, when you're up there speaking, you can't really look at it, but she'll go in and look later. If you feel like a speaker's doing a great job, speakers love it. If you tweet or if you put something on Yammer that says, I'm in this session, it's awesome. They also love it if you, if you grab a picture. You know, if you grab a picture of somebody while they're up, to, up there presenting, especially if you're, you're kind of towards the front, um, you know, I've spoken before, and I don't think I have any pictures of myself speaking because I can't take a picture of myself while I'm up there, right? So that's a great way to kind of like reach out the olive branch and be like, hey, you know, I, I saw your session. I thought it was great, you know, and, uh, and you know, over time you get to know people, and, and I think that's, that's really where the big value comes from these things is building a network of people that you can kind of ask questions of not just while you're at the conference but after you're done with the conference. Would you guys agree? It, definitely. Absolutely. All right, we've got some uh, links here to resources. This is stuff that, you know, you might have already seen, but if you haven't, let me just bring over, uh, I've got a browser here. So, you know, the main Microsoft Ignite page, I'm sure everybody's been here because you had to go here to register. Uh, there is a Connect page, and I think, Asif, if you had some things here you wanted to highlight. So let me just scroll down this while you talk. Yeah, did you already, okay, clicked on Connect already? Yeah. Okay. Is it not showing? Uh, go I down. It on my side. Go down. Yeah, so these things, these cards basically are uh, ever-changing. They're dynamic in nature. So these point to videos, shows, articles, and other stuff like that, which uh, you want definitely to, to be at. Cause this is where you know what's happening around you, what's happening at the sessions, what's happening at the conference. 
Uh, and this is going to change during the conference as well, right? Things will be this will be updated while we're out there. So it's kind of like that um, build experience, you know. So it, they're they're making into a card format here as well. Uh, and I would definitely suggest coming over here during and before and uh, before the event to see what's what's changed. Sure, sure. Um, awesome. The other thing, by the way, I don't know if we've got a slide for it or not, but if you've if you've never been to these events, the first thing I I think. If you put a little bit of effort into it, you should not have to pay for a single meal the whole time you're here, right? <laughs> There's always something going on after hours, and seeing like this kind of car thing, it kind of just reminds me that this is often the kind of place where you find out about some kind of after hour event where there's maybe free food or free drinks or whatever, right? So, uh, so there's something in it for you as well, right? It's not not just that. And the same thing, by the way, a couple slides back, we have the expo hall. You know, some people I think feel like oh, I don't want to talk to vendors, but you know. Nobody, none of this would be possible if it wasn't for uh, vendors like you know, like like Asif and, and uh, Visual SP, like sponsoring events like this, right? So go talk to people, right? You might find out that they have a solution to a problem that you have, and uh, you know, you, you'll never know if you don't go. But uh, but that's also, by the way, when you talk to vendors, that's usually when all of a sudden they'll start and they'll say, hey, where are you going to go tomorrow night? Because we have a party. You know, here's a wristband, right? So it's a great way to get uh, get free food, I think. So something very near and dear to my heart. Um, Here's the schedule tab. I've been on it. It's a little bit, uh, for me, I thought it was a little bit slow, but Asif pointed out some good stuff, so I just want to share that with you. On the left-hand side, almost like SharePoint, believe it or not, uh, we've got search refiners, right? So if we come down here and we look at formats and products, here I can click on SharePoint, and I can also click on Office 365, and if you do that, those two together, now I think my page is refreshing right now. It's a little on the slow side. There we go. So there's SharePoint. Let's get Office 365 in the mix. And I think it ended up with, when we did it earlier, it was like 350 sessions combined. Uh, let's see what it comes up with this time. But, um, yep, 348 sessions for SharePoint and for Office 365. So if you're looking for stuff and you're a SharePoint person, it might be a faster way for you to kind of scroll through things than trying to go through all sessions. They, uh, by the way, if you looked at the schedule before, they were at like 600 and something sessions. If you look at it today, it's over 1,100. And what they did is there are going to be community sessions. I should probably go back to the slide deck here. I don't know where these things are going to be, but they're going to have these. Um, they're going to have these yeah. community presentations that are 20 minutes long. Well, there's like 500 of those, and they've added those to the schedule. So now when you look at the schedule, you kind of have to pay attention to where it is. I, don't get me wrong, I'm doing a community session. I think, Jen, you're doing a community session. Yep. Obviously, my, my and Jen's session are going to be great, but you know, <laughs> if you're looking to attend you know, the, the longer sessions, you, know, you have to kind of weed that out based on their location now. So uh, just something to be aware of there. Uh, Did you where time. it's happening, the theater? That, that's something I could not find, the location of the theater and the uh, expo. I couldn't either, but they just put this up. God, I wonder, do you think they're having it? They wouldn't have it in the Airy Crown Theater, would they? That's in the middle of McCormick. That that's actually pretty big for something like that. No, these theater sessions are, I'm sure, within the vendor floor. That's floor. kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. That they would be. I the understood theater. they were within the vendor hall, and they only fit like 25 or 30 people. Right. So I don't. That think sounds, that sounds that about right. Yeah. Place. That sounds about right. So, um, yeah. And if you look over here, so uh, going back, Lake is over here. Um, let me just draw. Let's choose a bright color. So here's the lake over here. This is the original building that was in the Blues Brothers. This is called the, the Lakeside Building. There's a bridge, they don't show it here, that connects the two of them. Uh, this looks like here, this is the exhibit floor, right? Is that where that's at, if I'm, if I'm getting that right? Okay. And, then, uh, and then food and stuff is over here. So I think that the, those sessions would be over here. Not to, not to derail too much, but just again so that if you're thinking about going to a session and you're looking at this thing, the reason there's so many is they've now added all these community sessions that are 20 minutes long. So, uh, so hey, you know like what? Can I throw something in there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Something that happened last year as well, and I, I hate to say it this way, but the site unfortunately has slowed down every time between the conference. So I would suggest to folks to make your list offline as well, just in case you can't get to the site when you really need it and you want to yeah. get that's great advice, and I think actually what you hinted at earlier is it sounds like they're going to have booklets again this year. Last year at the SharePoint conference, they didn't have booklets, and the site just crumbled under the pressure. It was just slow and horrible, and you couldn't get to it. And um, I actually sat out on a couple sessions because I couldn't even find what I wanted to go to, so it was uh, it was a little bit frustrating. But uh, but that's that's um, also yeah, good advice there. I got some uh, information from our uh, from from our team member Carrie, who's also yeah. auditing this webinar that. Uh, most probably, the lounges are where the theater sessions will take place. That sounds about right to me. That sounds right. Yeah, probably. Cool. Oh, my goodness. You know, I didn't even scroll my question list. There's a whole bunch more questions here. 
Wow. Okay. So we need to find uh, some more time to answer some more of your questions, and we will try to get to that uh, as much as we can. I think we've got plenty of time here, so we should be good. Uh, if you're not familiar with Yammer, now when you signed up for Microsoft Ignite on the Ignite page, at some point you will have gotten an email that said, hey, be sure to join the conversation on Yammer and click through that. Now, if you don't have that conversation uh, email, just look at this address. It's yammer.com slash Microsoft Ignite. Okay. If you just go to that address, you won't be able to get into it, but you can request access. And uh, I requested it like a week ago. It took like an hour and somebody, somebody came in and gave me access. So I, I don't know, uh, you know how fast they'll be able to do that if you wait until the last minute, but definitely you want to get on Yammer. That's going to be, I think, a pretty active place for conversation. I don't have it here, but on Twitter, my understanding is that the uh, let me see if I can draw this on the screen here. So I'm going to do type. I understand it's going to be hash type. Is it is it MS Ignite is what they're trying to use, I think, for their hashtag. And the, uh, the at symbol for their, if you want to follow them on Twitter, is at MS underscore Ignite, if I'm not mistaken, right? So on Twitter, which I don't have up, but that's uh, that's a way to follow along with Twitter if you're uh, rather use that than, uh, than Yammer. And then we talked a little bit uh, on this uh, other screen that we looked at, I think it was this one. You see these guys talking in front of some TVs here? Well, that's the uh, Channel 9 videos, right? That's right here. That's channel9.msdn.com slash shows slash Microsoft Ignite Countdown. They've done 13 of these shows so far, and they have one more to go. And on this last show, they announced that Fallout Boy is going to be the entertainment. Uh, I guess they're from Chicago, and uh, Pretty pretty big deal. So they're going to be the entertainment on Thursday night. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, they have one more show that's going to be coming out, and most of these I think are pretty short. That was 13 minutes, half an hour, half an hour, half an hour. Um, so there could be some good information to glean from these pages as well if you if you feel like watching some stuff when you get to your hotel or what have you. So uh, so good stuff there. So uh, hey, anybody have anything to add to that? While you're at Channel Nine, just do a quick search here uh, to for SBC or yeah, just do a search for SBC. Um, See, this stuff, here's Laura's session and others as well. So Microsoft is planning to do the same thing, in my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, that they're going to take the Ignite sessions and put this right after, right here in about a week, a uh, week's time. Yeah, that was a big surprise at last year's SharePoint event for me, is that in the past, you couldn't get to the videos unless you went to the conference, right, which meant it locked it out from lots of other people. My understanding is that there's going to be a few things this time around that are streamed live, so even if you're not going in person, you can watch, like, the keynote, and that the recordings are going to try to be up. Um, hopefully, if they can pull it off in a week, I mean, that's an awful lot of production work to do in a week, but if they can do it, that'd be great. If it's two weeks, I mean, hey, it's going to be free content, and it should be pretty awesome, so um, it's nice also, if you attend the session and you see something great, and you're like, gosh, I wish my boss could have seen this, right? Well, now you can go back and you be like, hey, I was in this session. It was awesome. Here are the highlights. Here's a link to it, right? I think your boss would certainly appreciate that, you know, that summary. And it takes the pressure off if you can't attend the session. Um, if you've got two things at the same time or something along that, it just makes it a lot easier knowing, knowing you can easily get to it. Yeah, and like I said before, I think the big the big value is is in the connections, right? It's in meeting people and hanging out with people and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I feel like you know the sessions are great. I, personally, I go to a conference. If I attend too many sessions, they all start to meld together in my head, and I, I don't even remember <laughs> what came from where, right? But when yeah. I meet people face to face, it really helps because then when I ping Jennifer Mason on Twitter later and I say, "Hey, I need some help with uh, this no code solution I'm working on," you know, I can say, "Hey, Jennifer, I met you at the conference and." And Jennifer will say, "Yeah, I totally remember you, right?" So, um, so I think that's that's great stuff. Yeah. Um, does anybody has anybody been scamming uh, scamming scanning questions while I've been chatting here? Because I'd love to get some more of these user questions. Question, which uh, was asked uh, that if we cannot get into a session, can we watch the actual session while it's going on on Yammer or somewhere else? And I'm hundred almost hundred percent sure, ninety nine point nine nine percent sure that that no, you cannot. At that point in time, when it's being recorded, there's no way, place where it's actually being broadcasted. On the Yammer, it's only text-based or attachment-based interaction that you can do, but not the actual video-based interaction. Sure. Um, let's see here. Actually, i got to put a shout-out to Trevor because I've met Trevor before. Trevor said uh, they had booklets at Ignite, which, I th which is interesting because it says they had booklets but had past tense. But, yes, I think they're going to have booklets at Ignite, so that is awesome. Somebody asked if there is an Android phone app. Um, I don't think I've seen any reference to a mobile app yet, and I've looked around and I haven't seen it. Somebody else, Jack Smith, said uh, the mobile app was just released, yeah. and somebody asked if he had a link to it, and so, he put down. Uh, yeah, uh, 
Yeah, click on that link if you see it, or I can click on that. It's uh, ignite ignite.microsoft.com slash, uh, and then there's a hash, and then slash mobile app. So it was the myignite? Dot microsoft.com slash hash, yeah. And then at the end, instead of home, you want to replace that with mobile replace app. That with mobile app. Like so. So, by the way, in the store, uh, App Store, there's actually an Ignite conference app. Don't download that one. There, yeah, that one's not the right one. No, no, it's not. It's actually that's one is for like Network Ignite or something like that out of California. Yeah, yeah, that's so that's a good point. Yeah, there is. So, uh, Jack Smith, thank you so much for posting this because I I don't I looked at I looked for this yesterday and I couldn't find it. So I don't know if this just went that's up really, while we were talking or what. Yeah, but yeah. it looks like you're going to have Windows, Android, and Apple Store, uh, you know, iOS devices supported. So um, that is fantastic, fantastic news. That is great. So. Um, and good thing, by the way, if you go to the site uh, on your mobile device, it's not terrible. So if you don't get the app, you go there directly. It's still not a terrible experience. It's, I found it to be slow, unfortunately. Hopefully that gets better. But the experience was not bad. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Trevor came back and said, no, he was talking about tech ed. That's what he was talking about. So thanks, thanks, Trevor, either way. That's awesome. And Jack, thanks so much for posting that. That is great. Uh, that is great there. Um, one person commented, he said, he, the vendors are the reason he goes to these shows. Uh, that was John. And John said, you know, vendors are the reason I go. I get more information from people that you would only email otherwise. That's actually, you know, that's pretty smart if you think about it because people do call all the time, right? Everybody wants to sell you something. It's nice to be able to meet people face to face and kind of get an idea for, you know, are these the kind of people you'd be comfortable doing business with? Are these the kind of people that, you know, make sense to maybe have more discussions with? I think that's a great, uh, that's a great point. Great point for sure. Um, let's see, before we move forward on the slides, what else is out there? If no app, is there an export to Outlook for feature sessions? That I don't know. Um, somebody said this app is amazing, tons of information available. Um, that was actually Jack again. Uh, search the App Store for Microsoft Ignite. Yeah, now Jim said if you search the App Store for Microsoft Ignite, you can find the correct app. And that goes back to what uh, Asif was saying is there is somebody else before Microsoft decided to call an event Ignite. So there is another Ignite event, but it's not the same one. Uh, here's a good one. I think everybody wants to know this. Is there any word on discounted hardware Hint, hint, Surface Pro 3 or Surface 3. Does anybody have any info on that? Uh, Jennifer, do you? I don't. No, I don't have any info on that. I haven't, I haven't heard anything. I think they'll, I, make, I, they'll be making something about uh, the Microsoft Band, though. I think that's going to be there featured nicely. I'm not sure about Surface. Yeah, I don't know either. Now, for those of you who have not been following, the Surface 3 originally was supposed to be out in June, and I just saw, like, last week or the week before, they are expecting to ship it during the week of Ignite. It was a little bit of a bummer for me because I almost probably would have bought one if I could have gotten it like on Saturday to take to Ignite to use it with OneNote, but it will not be uh, will not be available, I think, until Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And they say shipping, so I don't know if there's a Microsoft uh, store that will have them or not. By the way, if you... Um, do we know where the Microsoft, Microsoft stores are in the Chicago area? There's one in Oak Brook. There's one in Schaumburg. Is there one downtown? Does anybody know? Well, it's actually, I should know this thing being in Chicago, but I don't know. Hmm. I think the nearest one might be Oak Brook. Yeah. Do you think they'll set up a shop on site? I'm pretty sure there's going to be a smaller one, but it won't be as yeah. comprehensive as regular store. Yeah. There, and and oh. what's normally happened is they've normally had like a bookstore, and it seems as though like the you know there's there's like clothing and there's you know USB keys and things like that. Yeah. yeah, but I, they, yeah it just I got some people saying you know before we say the wrong thing, Judy, Michael, and other different Judy. Okay, they all said that there's one downtown. Thanks, guys. Oh, excellent. Okay, so Michigan Avenue has one. Um, perfect. Oh, yeah, it's listed on the badge pickup. Thanks, Michael. Uh, by the way, Michael's in the room, so if you don't know Michael, uh, Michael and I are uh, doing a community session uh, about uh, PowerShell, and then I think Michael's doing another one about uh, about community events in general and things like that, so uh, Michael's an awesome guy and recently became an MVP, so congratulations, Michael, for, for earning your MVP stripes. Congrats, um, Michael. Okay, right. let's see. What else do we have here? Mobile app for Surface or just use the browser? I don't know on that one. Probably just the browser, I think. Um, we'll come back to this stuff. How about we do some more slides here? We got more sounds good. Uh, sounds yeah. good, yeah. We have more to cover. Okay, so uh, going back here, let me make that full screen for us. That kind of covers all these important links that we had. So these are just screenshots we've got of the different things. And I think we really just kind of covered all of that. So that's good. Uh, ah, very important topic. Asif, do you want to talk about this one? 
<laughs> well, we all have to eat. Uh, there's a lot of information they provided this time. We weren't able to list everything, meaning we left the breakfast out, but we left the second most important meal of the day here. Uh, a lot of <laughs> information here. I don't want to go into the actual food, but you, can, you guys can see it. This first slide has Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then uh, if you go to the next slide, it has the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in there too, and Friday they want to just okay. take you out. Uh, you said that they're serving, they're, they're serving breakfast and lunch, correct? Yes, yes. There's... So if you're staying at a hotel, don't, don't spend $30 to eat the hotel's breakfast. Come on down and get the free one from, uh, well, it's, I, don't know if, I don't know if you say the free one or the $2,200 um, one from Microsoft, so keep right? Keep in mind, looking at the list that I had, it's more of a continental type of breakfast. So it's not amazing, but it's still going to be enough for you to eat and take away with you. Yeah. Well. well, this is nice to have this ahead of time because if you think you might skip out on a meal, um, this is, you know, at least gives you a heads up. Now, in McCormick Place, there are actually a few places where there are, like, restaurants in McCormick Place. They're not super huge, and I don't know if they'll be open for this event or not. I've been to McCormick when they aren't open, and I've been to McCormick when they are. Uh, those are not, you know, just so you know, those are not going to be free. If you see one, you decide, oh, I'm going to stop in here and get a sandwich. It's not the same as, uh, as the, the food that's provided, obviously. Um, Asif, do you remember where you found this information? It's on the website, and one of the... Uh, I want to say one of those countdown shows, actually. Uh, okay. One of the transcripts for that, yeah. Okay, great. Um, then we get on to uh, Ignite Parties. There is there is an awful lot going on, isn't there? There is yes. an awful lot. <laughs> and unlike the sessions, if you miss these, these are not being recorded. So um, there's no going back. But it does kind of uh, speak to what I said earlier. If you just ask around, you can probably get free dinner every single day of the week, right? Now, do you guys know when is the vendor reception hall? Is that Monday or Tuesday? Yeah, this that's Monday night. That's Monday night. The welcome Monday. reception, yeah, Monday night. Yeah. So Monday night after the event, if we uh, I don't know, if we slide back like a million slides here, let me just escape and maybe we can find it there. We go back to the um, the map here. Okay, so in the hall, which I think is in the north building, if I'm not mistaken, okay, mm -hmm. that is when the, the, the opening reception is going to be. They always have food at those things. Okay, so Monday, count on getting breakfast taken care of, lunch taken care of, and dinner taken care of uh, <laughs> right off the bat, right? So that's where that one is. And then, of course, on Thursday, the event is over here in Lakeside Center. That's the Fall Out Boy concert thing. Does anybody know if they're serving food for that, or is that just a kind of a social mixer? Uh, no, they're actually having food trucks, I read. So they're having food trucks nice. from the Chicago area, and they're having craft beer, so Goose oh, Island. Wow. I oh, nice. It's gonna be out there. I don't know who else will be out there. And then um, it was, like, local food trucks from around the area. So okay. hopefully, and, like, uh, local restaurants sampling their cuisine. So it actually sounds like it could be a pretty great a pretty great evening event, which I, I was a little worried as to what they were going to do, but it sounds really great. Yeah, it really does sound pretty awesome. Um, so I think Monday and Thursday, pretty much everyone's taken care of. Wednesday and Tuesday, you'll have to kind of be a little bit more proactive, right? You'll have to find out where these events are and get a, in many cases, there's a wristband or something to that effect, right? So what I would suggest on these guys is the first thing first, if you know there's an event, like here's K2, right? They do uh, workflow software, right? It looks like they're going to do an event. If you use K2 at work, reach out to your K2 rep right now and see if you can get you know reserved for that event ahead of time. Right when you get to McCormick Place on Monday, some of these events are already going to be sold out. They're already going to be you know at maximum capacity. Right now. Don't worry if that happens to you because, as you can see, there's plenty of other stuff, and there's probably plenty of stuff that's not even on this slide. That's what goes back to you know, walk around, ask people what's going on, find out, you know, watch Twitter, that kind of stuff, and and you'll you'll all I I have no doubt everybody can find free food for the whole week. So you know, here's what you do, Jack and Jennifer. I would, this is my suggestion that everybody, what you want to do is you want to go to the vendor and you say, hey, we're already using K2, or we're using Nintex, or we're using Avpoint, or whatever else, and then you know, give them your company name, and they'll give you a wristband. Most probably that. Most of the time, that works. <laughs> yeah, if, if if it's true, right? Don't don't go over and be like, yeah, we're using, uh, yeah, we're well, using K two. Obviously, we're not. But, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Awesome. Um, Jennifer, you have anything else to add on parties and all that kind of stuff? No, but I'm really the worst person to ask for it. You guys will all be shocked if you see me out after about 10 p.m. Um, <laughs> I like to sleep, so you, I'm not the party one, but um, I'll be at a few of them. I'll be at the Ignite Celebration and some of the others, but uh, probably not too many of the others. They are all fun, just so late. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Let me go through. Uh, we've got meetups at a lot of the hotels. 
Uh, Asif, you threw the slide together. Yeah. Do you know any more about this? Yeah. This is a much more casual, relaxed type of meetups. They're, they're share, share pints. And I don't want to call them share pints because it's an Ignite pint, and there's much more than share point stuff taking place or share point community people. But that's exactly what it is. It's a share pint at all these different hotels. There'll be a facilitator or somebody who's going to be welcoming people, but then after that, it's all social in nature. And are these all open, or are these going to be like little pods of kind of like I don't want to you know like to use the old high school word of clicks or something? Like, is it going to be like a couple MVPs that are out having a drink, or are these like open to anybody? It's open to everybody and anybody. And I, I honestly, I wouldn't uh, count on having either MVPs or Microsoft folks there. It's just for anybody and everybody, and you'll see anybody and everybody there. Now, now more importantly, if if you're not going to see Microsoft there and you're not going to see any MVPs there, who uh, who would we expect to be paying the bill for these drinks that we consume at these after hours events? Jack Fru. Okay, so uh, <laughs> yeah. so this is pay pay as you go. This is not a uh, not That's a right. not, not a sponsored free thing. Some of them are right. In fact, I think there's one big one that that was so. Um, so that's pretty good. So here's our attendee party. And by the way, if you're in the uh, the chat room or the question and answer room, I see a lot of questions and I want to get to them. We're going to try to, you know, you can see I've got, I think I've got four more slides and then we'll, we'll try to answer questions for the remainder of the period here. There are some good ones about Wi-Fi access and different things like that. So uh, we definitely want to get to that. Uh, attendee celebration, we've already talked about. Lakeside Center, remember that's the black building by the lake. It's not the newer white building. Easy to get to either way. Um, lots of stuff. Oh yeah, here Chicago cuisine, craft beer, just like just like Jen said. Hey Jen, good work. <laughs> um, okay, here's a little public service announcement. If you are not from Chicago and you are thinking about taking a train somewhere, like you say, oh, you know, there's a train right outside my hotel. I'll just take that such and such. One thing you should be aware of: there are 11 different railroad routes that do not come into the same place. Okay, I think there's five different train stations in downtown Chicago. Yeah. There are eight different L trains. I think. I think most of these go around this part called the loop, okay? But I'm not 100% certain. But but just something to be aware of. It's not as simple as it would be if you were in, let's say, you know, there's, some, there's some parts of the country where they have they have one train. You get on it, you know it's going to take you somewhere, right? Minnesota, they have light rail. It goes from here to there, that's it. This is not the same thing. So, so just be aware of it. Colors to remember for L is the blue and green, right? Blue for O'Hare, green for Midway. Is that... Is that I think it's actually the orange line that goes out to Midway. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, you're right. Oh, orange is Midway. Blue and orange. orange. Now the interesting thing is when I look at this map here, let me see if I can zoom this in with uh, zoom it here. There's a blue line that goes west, and there's a blue line that goes That's out different. to O'Hare. Yeah. I don't know the difference between those. Like I don't know if it starts here, comes in downtown, and then comes out here and comes back. Um, they do a good job of putting signs yeah. and stuff like that up there, but again, just something to be aware of. You know, don't so, don't just plan foolishly thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to hop on the train, I'll be done. Like put some effort into it. Right? You want to make sure not to go to sleep on the blue line, otherwise you'll end up in the other part of town. Basically, you want to yeah. get off it. Yeah, and, and I, I, maybe I'm being unfair. I try to avoid the south side all the way around. Um, there's probably some uh, very interesting stuff to see there, but uh, but yeah, the, the the magnificent mile, the part people talk about in Chicago, that's downtown and then north of downtown, right? In fact, I think they call this area to the north of downtown. You know, it's nicknamed the Gold Coast. Uh, that's where you're going to find all your fancy, expensive shops. You know, the Microsoft Store is going to be there, that kind of thing. So. Um, that's where you want to go. Now, before we get into the Q&A stuff, I do just want to do a, a public service announcement for the folks that are on here. Uh, before I even start with that, uh, you know, Asif uh, has this company, Visual SP. They do online training. They do online videos where you can go and learn about SharePoint. Uh, we're able to do this webinar today thanks to his generosity because we're using their go-to-webinar thing, which is not, uh, you know, those, those they're not free. That's not cheap. So, uh, so a special shout-out to Visual SP, and if you're if you have people at work that, you know, maybe they keep coming to you for questions, you know, maybe recommend, hey, go check out Visual SP and, and see if maybe that that might be a way for you to learn, uh, you know, some some good stuff, right? So uh, shout out there. Now, Asif uh, and Jen are doing a session together. Uh, they're doing it Wednesday, May 6th. It's Is it the first one? It must be 9 o'clock until 10.15, right? Um, I have seen Asif speak. Jen, I haven't seen you speak, but based on Asif's word, I'm going to say that you're, you're awesome. And uh, <laughs> what I can say is... I have been to multiple events where people could not get in to Asif's session. I'm not talking about standing room only. I'm talking about people outside in the hallway trying to look through the door and the bouncers are closing the door saying, you know, we, we can't let anybody else in, fire, blah, 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 right? So if you're interested in hearing what Asif's got to say, definitely do not show up at 9 o'clock in the morning. Get there just a little early, right? Now, I, do you have any idea, Asif, how big your room is this year? 
Well, I appreciate the props, first of all. I feel humbled. Um, no, I don't know how big this is. Uh, I think Jen and I, we do get a pretty big audience. So hopefully com combine us together. Uh, I'm hoping that they gave us a big room, but I have no idea. <laughs> and just to put it in perspective, I think the rooms at the last SharePoint Fest, I think they held 600 people. And and like literally, there must have been 50 people out in the hallway that couldn't get in, right? Now, if it holds 600 people, that means standing room only. It maybe holds 650, right? You have people around the back and the sides and stuff like that. So, I mean, just to put it in perspective, if you're thinking, oh, you know, well, I'll, I'll make it there in time, whatever. If you want to see these guys talk, um, definitely get there a little bit early. And and I like I've said before, it's worth your time. These these guys are fantastic uh, presenters, and they they have great content. So. A uh, little plug there. Jennifer, There's uh, if you go to her page on the Ignite system, this one in the middle is the one that she's doing with Asif. And then, Jennifer, do you want to tell us about, it looks like you've got an MVP panel and uh, something else that you're doing in the community area. You want to talk about that real quick? Yeah, so the one in the community area is just a quick little 10-minute session um, that's kind of some highlights of some of the things that are in Asif and I's session. Okay. Um, so we're going to be doing that there in the theater session. Um, that should be it. Should be fun, I guess. That that showed up on my calendar um, just last week. It was it was kind of funny. Um, and then Thursday is um, the uh, a session with MVP. So there's just a, I mean there's so many MVPs, but in this session we have just a, col a collection of them. So Dan Holmes, Laura Rogers, um, Chris McNulty, and I believe. Um, Christian Buckley, I think, is the other one. And we're just on a panel, and we're going to talk about SharePoint on-prem, online, and everything in between. And so that is going to be just a panel where people get to ask questions, and we're going to answer them. So we don't really have a lot of information planned for that session, but just answering um, answering questions is what we'll be doing in that one. Awesome. And then if you heard me earlier, I was talking about Mike Blumenthal. Uh, Mike and I, along with Jeff Hicks, are going to be doing a Q&A for PowerShell uh, in the community area as well. Ours is uh, Wednesday the 6th from 11.30 to 11.55. And I uh, would certainly love to see you there. And if you happen to see me at the show, certainly come up and say hi. And, uh, you know, happy to meet and help anybody I can. So I think that is the last of our slides, but I think we've got just a ton of good questions out there. So does anybody, first of all, does anybody have an answer to the Wi-Fi question? Does yeah. anybody know that answer yet? So um, Jack, uh, and not you, Jack, Jack Smith from the actual webinar, we one of the attendees, actually put some information out there. Uh, and Jack, if you don't mind just yeah, asking well. that question, if is this public information that we can share? That you got? I just want to not, I don't want to post this out, the password and the SSID if it's not Public. So if you can just let us know, then we'll make it publicly available. Uh, okay, so Jack mentioned that he found this on the MS Ignite app. So what I'm going to do, um, uh, Jack Fru, <laughs> right, yep. is I want to go ahead and take this information and make it public over here. Okay. Uh, so it's Wi-Fi wi SSID is MS Ignite 5GHZ, so 5 gigahertz, and the password is Chicago2015. I'm taking the whole thing copying it and putting it into a chat window so everybody has it. So there we go. Jack Smith, you're uh you're like our you're like our webinar MVP today, I think. This is this is awesome. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack. And we're talking about Jack Smith who provided this, not Jack Fru who's talking right now. So um okay, let's see here. Lynn asked if I can zoom, but I think that was on a different screen. So sorry about that, Lynn. Um somebody asked uh let's see here, Kate, and it looks like it might be two parts. Which line for McCormick? To blue line to airport, is it possible? Ah, uh, that's a good question, Kate. Uh, it looks like somebody answered that one already, so I think we're good. Um, yeah. So it looks like so. Bottom line, there is an L train that goes by McCormick, but it's about two blocks, maybe three blocks to the west of it. Okay, further away from the lake. Uh, I don't think the blue line goes down that segment. So you might be able to catch the L there take it into what's called the loop, get off of that L, wait for a blue line that's going to O'Hare, and then get back on, and then go to O'Hare. That might work. Um, there is no train that goes to O'Hare, just in case you guys are wondering. No no Metra train. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in the train, I think we call that out here. It's called Metra, M-E-T-R-A, or Metra Rail, uh, and that's where you'll find the schedule for the Metra train stuff. Um, Bo said thanks, big thanks to Asif, so thanks, Bo. We appreciate that. Um, let's see, anything else here? Somebody said Goose Island is awesome. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so Jack, <clears throat> you and I, I'm sure we can mention some of the Chicago specifics as well. For example, one thing that I would like to mention is if you're here, do not miss the lake. 
It's beautiful uh, or semi-beautiful right now. It's not amazing yet. Uh, don't miss a magnificent mile, which is Michigan Avenue, a big stretch of it. It's beautiful there as well. And all that stuff is available. It's very, very close uh, to where you'll be staying, any hotel that you were staying in downtown. There are right. lots of awesome museums, the Science Industry Museum, the, uh, the Field Museum, Aquarium, and all that stuff. Everything is a walking distance. Navy Pier, of course, can't miss that. So yeah. Welcome to our city, Chicago. We almost never I have, to put, I have to put a disclaimer on there because I love the Museum of Science and Industry. That's the one that's not within walking distance. That's about, uh, was it maybe three miles south of McCormick? That's still walking distance. What are you talking about, Jack? Oh, I don't know if I'd want to walk there. Walking. I don't know. But uh, but they, they have some great stuff. There's a, there's a coal mine exhibit that's been very popular there. They've got an airplane that you can walk through. They've got a giant model train set of downtown Chicago and all that stuff. Yeah. And there's a lot of neat stuff at... Uh, that one the art museum is right art museum is right on the magnificent mile that's that's a nice one to go to as well absolutely um, by the way you know sometimes people hear of big cities I, I could certainly understand some apprehension you know is it safe to walk around and stuff like that I feel like the magnificent mile pretty safe to walk around I mean it, it's very well lit there's gonna be you know you'll see there's gonna be people out there any time of day even on the weekend um, what have you so I don't think you have too much to worry about like anything you know use common sense if you see people that look like they might be up to no good then you know walk away from them, that kind of thing but I don't think you have a whole lot to worry about. Uh, Chicago is pretty safe actually there are, there are small parts of it as you know uh, of course which are not uh, but you can tell you know when you go yeah. too, too far south it gets a little bit you just get a feeling great. you're just like yeah I don't know if we should be here right yeah. so um, let's see I'm just uh, so I think we're all Almost done here. If you'd ask a question we haven't answered, then hang on, of course, because we're going to try to go through and see what we might have missed. Yeah, uh, honestly, um, going forward, the Ignite co conference app that that, that uh, Jack pointed out, Jack Smith pointed out, the Ignite, uh, the actual website, and also the uh, what do you call the Channel Nine website, which has a lot of uh, the countdown information coming in. That's going to yeah, and, have a lot and again, of Channel Nine is expecting one more video between now and the event. So sometime this yeah. week, I expect to get you know kind of the last minute. Goodies They've been doing a really good event. job putting all that stuff out there. So kudos they really to have. Kudos they they to really stuff. have. Absolutely. Um, uh, as far as discounted hardware, I, I think if we all, I don't know what we would do if we rub our hands together or, or, or you know, say a prayer or whatever. I mean, maybe, but I, I don't, I don't think so. But I would love if I tell you if they if they have discounted surfaces, I think I'm going to just break down and buy one because uh, I, I would love to get one. But uh, um, Build is typically the name of the conference where people get cool stuff like that. So. Um, yeah. Oh, here. Gary says he looked for the SPC, uh, um, Visual SP booth, and couldn't find it, I think, before. And we've all shown you where that is this time, so uh, definitely come by and say hello. Hey. I just found some information. Uh, this is from one of our attendees, actually. Thanks for pointing this out. Who was this? Uh, Charles. Charles actually put a link out there for, on the Yammer group, but you have to belong to the Yammer group to get to this particular link. But this is supposedly shuttle, shuttle service from O'Hare. I had no idea. Now, let me ask you, do you know, is that, because there's, there's definitely always been generic shuttle service. Is there a special shuttle service that's associated that's with this what event? I'm yeah, that's what I'm, I mean, of course, there's shuttles. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think that's from flychicago.com. So it's general hotel sh shuttle service. But still, it's good to know that there's shuttle service you can take from there. For sure, for sure. Yeah, so I put um, a link out there. Yeah, so last thing, I guess, maybe just to talk about, I assume if you're going to go to the conference, you're not coming in Monday morning, you're coming in Sunday, right? Is there anything, Asif, uh, that you'd recommend people go see Sunday night, assuming they've already gotten their registration badge and stuff? Yeah, have dinner at, uh, what was that, um, uh, what's that second Are public building in Chicago? Not the 95th? Yeah, definitely worth I mean, you know, people say Willis Tower, uh, but especially for dinner or just for drinks, if, if dinner is too expensive in that case. Because, you know, from there you get a magnificent view of the city and of the lake if you go the 95th uh, John Hancock building. Yeah. Uh, that'll be, I think that's what I should do. So, uh, so just in case you're not familiar with downtown Chicago, Sears Tower, the, the big landmark, if you will, is in the middle of downtown, okay? It's actually nowhere near this Gold Coast area that we're talking about, which is much closer to the lake. North of the Sears Tower and east of it, closer to the lake, is this building called the John Hancock Center. It's, it's like 96 stories or 95 stories, and at the top of this is a restaurant called the 95th, right? That's why they got the name, the 95th floor. Um, it's very expensive. Okay, I can guarantee you that it will be reservation only sold out on the day of the event. So if you think you want to go, at the very least, call from your hotel first and make sure that you know they can get you in. But like Asif said, the view is going to be 
like something you'll remember the rest of your life. It's just Here, awesome. Jack, here's my justification for the expense, all right? If you're coming to a conference, most probably your company is paying for your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you're yeah. getting your breakfast, lunch, and dinner taken care of at the conference by all these vendors and Microsoft, right? So might as well take that $100 what budget that you have, let's say, for one of the days and spend it on the… Oh, uh, I, no, I agree. Yeah. I, and I'm not, I didn't want to say it was expensive to, 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 to fer, or, uh, deter anybody. Uh, really, the big thing will be making sure you get a reservation so that you're not, you know, because uh, let's face it, there's going to be 20,000 people here that aren't normally here. Yeah. Uh, the people on this webinar will not be the only people who decided last minute to go to the 95th to eat. <laughs> It's um, so worth it. It's so worth another, it. Another neat place on the Magnificent Mile is Water Tower Place. It's like a little indoor mall that's, I think, what, seven stories tall on the inside for the, uh, for the mall part. And they have a food court and things like that. Uh, if you have a daughter, I think they have an American Girl doll store there. I've taken my kid there before. Um, it's just ridiculous inside that place. Um, what else is there? There's a, a Hard Rock Hotel down there. I mean, there's just so much. I don't think we named it all. Uh, Grant Park, by the way is the big green area between the lake and where most of the buildings are in downtown. It's just a little bit south of the Gold, Gold Coast. Sometimes they have concerts and things out there. There is the famous Grant Park water fountain, which I don't, I don't know if that's on yet. They usually turn it on uh, you know, right when it starts to get warm out, and it's getting there, but it's not quite yet for Chicago, so I don't know if that will be on. But uh, so much good stuff to see, so much good stuff. So thanks, everybody, for attending. We really appreciate your time. And as a reminder, um, us, if you're going to send out uh, a follow-up information with the, the recording info and the slide yep. deck and all that stuff, right? Yep, we'll do that. Uh, the the slide uh, link has already been shared, so that's where everybody has that, and we'll be sending out a link for the recording of this webinar. And thanks, everybody, for joining. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, guys.